This is from the building blog dot blogspot.co.uk, authored by Jeff Manaw. And it features architectural conjecture, urban speculation, and landscape futures. The title of this blog post is Various Forms of Lithic Disguise. I finally had a chance to read John McPhee's book, La Place de la Concorde Suisse, his somewhat off-puttingly titled 1984 look at the Swiss military and its elaborately engineered landscape defenses. To make a long story short, McPhee describes two things, how Switzerland requires military service from every able-bodied male Swiss citizen, a model later emulated and expanded by Israel, and how the Swiss military has, in effect, wired the entire country to blow in the event of a foreign invasion. To keep enemy armies out, bridges will be dynamited and, whenever possible, deliberately collapsed onto other roads and bridges below. Hills will have been hills have been weaponized to be activated as valley sweeping artificial landslides. Mountain tunnels will be sealed from within to act as nuclear proof air raid shelters and much more. This is now I'm I find this fascinating because of our recent conversations on Adam versus the man about national defense as we transition to a voluntary society. Um, and obviously, yes, in a voluntary society, there's no such thing as national defense. But as we get to more freedom, how do we provide for defense against bad actors, be they rogue governments, like the one that's oppressing America right now, or governments external to the United States that might be a foreign military threat of some form? And of course, the best uh, defense against that, because remember, countries don't attack countries. Governments send young men and women from their country into other countries to kill, maim, oppress, or create an excuse for them to spend a lot of money on just doing that, as we've come to in the current global war on terror paradigm of military intervention. But this is really exciting as an alternative method of defense to what you can do in a free market, in a free country, to ensure that your country is never invaded. And this is really exciting because this whole infrastructure exists in a way that, well, you could see would function in a privatized infrastructure-based society and that you would want these things in place. If, you were a, if, if, if there was a real threat and the market decided, hey, there's a real threat of foreign military intervention or what have you, you would want to patronize roads and infrastructure features where such mechanisms were in place that they could at least be disabled if they were ever commandeered by a hostile force. First, a quick look at the system of self-demolition that is literally built into the Swiss national infrastructure. To interrupt the utility of bridges, tunnels, highways, railroads, Switzerland has established 3,000 points of demolition. That is the number officially printed. It has been suggested to me that, approxim that to approximate a true figure, a reader ought to multiply by two. Where a highway bridge crosses a railroad, a segment of the bridge is programmed to drop on the railroad. Prime Accord fuses are built into the bridge. Hidden artillery is placed on either side, set to prevent the enemy from clearing or repairing the damages. Near the German border of Switzerland, every railroad and highway tunnel has been pre prepared to pinch shut explosively. Nearby mountains have been made so porous that whole divisions can fit inside them. There are weapons and soldiers under barns. There are cannons inside pretty houses. Where Swiss highways happen to run on narrow ground between the edges of lakes and to the bottoms of cliffs, man-made rock slides are ready to slide. The impending self-demolition of the country is routinely practice. practiced, McPhee writes. Often in such assignments, the civilian engineer who created the bridge will, in his capacity as a military officer, be given the task of planning its destruction. But this is where a weirdly fascinating George Dante-esque artifice begins. After all, McPhee writes, why would Switzerland want anyone to know where the dynamite is wired, where the cannons are hidden, which bridges will blow, or where to find the army's top secret mountain hideaways and resupply shelters? But if you look closely, you start to see things. No, 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 and it makes total sense here. And I would say that the author is, is kind of missing the point in the larger implications for defense. It doesn't do any good, well, it does some good, but it doesn't do nearly as much good if this doesn't also serve as a deterrent. And this serves as a deterrent in the same way that being a free nation or being a free 
country, free area where there's no government, there's no system of taxation, is also a deterrent because governments like to take over other countries to take over the tax base because there's some form of, you know, continuing their protection racket of government in a new geographical area. And if you simply don't allow yourself to be taxed as a population, you take away that incentive in the same sense. If you say, hey, if you invade our country, we're going to blow everything up and you're not even going to be able to get around, let alone out while our well-armed population snipes at your ass, you know, hey, that's a great deterrent. That's the, if, that's, if, if anything, they should be advertising this more. But of course, all of the governments that would invade Switzerland are certainly, the, the, at least the right people are well aware of this. Through locked gates, you see corridors in the sides of mountains going on and on into the rock with a light in the ceiling every five meters and far too many to count. Riding around Switzerland with these matters in mind, seeing little driveways that blank out in mountain walls, cavern entrances like dark spots under mountainside railroads and winding cornishes, portals in various forms of lithic disguise, you can find it difficult not to imagine that almost anything is a military deception masking a hidden installation. Indeed, at one point, Mifi jokes that his local guide in Switzerland, quotes, quote, tends to treat the army itself as if it were a military secret. McPhee points to small moments of fake stonework concealing the artillery behind them that dot Switzerland's alpine geology, little doors that will pop open to reveal internal cannons that will then blast the country's roads to smithereens. Later, passing under a mountain bridge, McPhee notices small steel doors in one pier, hinting that the bridge was ready to blow. It had been superseded, however, by an even higher bridge, which leaped through the sky above, a part of the new road to Simplon. In an extreme emergency, the mid-span of the new bridge would no doubt drop on the old one. It's a strange kind of national infrastructure, one that is at its most rigorously functional, one that truly fulfills its promises when in a state of cascading self-imposed collapse. I could easily overquote my way to the end of my internet service here, but it's a story worth reading. There are, for instance, hidden bomb shelters everywhere in an extraordinary application of dual-use construction, quote, all over Switzerland, according to McPhee, and relatively spacious and quiet towns are sophisticated underground parking garages with automatic machines that offer tickets like tongues and imply a level of commerce that is somewhere else. In a nuclear emergency, huge doors would slide closed with the town's population inside. Don't fuck with the mountain people. Don't fuck with the Swiss. Describing titanic underground fortresses, networks of tunnels, caverns, bunkers, and surface installations, each spread through many tens of square miles, McPhee briefly relates the story of a military reconnaissance mission on which he was able to tag along involving a hydroelectric power station built inside a mountain accessible by ladders and stairs. The battalion tasked with climbing down into it thus learns Quote, that if a company of soldiers had to do it, they could climb the mountain on the inside. In any case, the book's vision of the Alps as a massively constructed, or at least geotechnically augmented and militarily amplified terrain is quite heady, including the very idea that in seeking to protect itself from outside invaders, Switzerland is prepared to dynamite shell bulldoze and seal itself into a kind of self-protective oblivion, hiding out in artificially expanded rocky passes and concrete super basements as all roads and bridges into and out of the country are instantly transformed into landslides and dust. Sounds like an effective means of national defense to me, and one that has exciting implications and possibilities for a free society, a governmentless, stateless society, being able to defend itself through something that isn't even violent in terms of attacking a foreign power. I mean, oh my God, do you see the implications for this? We don't need, in a free society, to have necessarily some defense collective or defense agencies. No, if we simply did what Switzerland did, we'd have a more effective deterrent from invasion than any act of aggression could. Combine that with a refusal to be taxed, and we might not just be the freest, but the safest nation on earth once again.